There are a number of books and sermons and even a song with the title, Dare to Be a Daniel. Uh, they encourage us to imitate Daniel uh, because of the good example that he sets. Uh, today, I am adding one more sermon onto this pile. Uh, and today, I hope uh, that you will dare to be a Daniel. Uh, he is an example of faith during terrible trouble. Uh, last week, we read the first few verses in chapter 1, and we read that Daniel was presented with a problem. Uh, he was uh, taken away uh, from his homeland, away from his family, forced to live uh, in uh, the court of a new king. And the king uh, had established for them some new routines that they were going to have to adopt. And one of the things that they were going to have to do was uh, uh, to eat the food that the king ate. And they were presented with, with what was a feast fit for a king. Uh, they were given food from the very king's uh, from the very table of the king, and they were expected to eat it. But as Daniel and uh, others uh, possibly were, were wrestling with this, uh, they had a problem. Uh, the king's desire was that this meal, that, or not, not meal, but this, uh, uh, this food that they would eat would, be, would put them in the very best of health. Uh, that these were the very best of the best from the different lands that Nebuchadnezzar had captured. And as he brought them to serve in his court, he wanted to make sure that they had uh, the very best food and that they be in the very best health. But for Daniel, uh, we are going to see this morning, this was not just a question of health. Uh, it was also a question about holiness. Daniel chapter 1, verses 8 through 16, give us uh, how Daniel responded. What did he do when he was presented with this problem? And this morning, there are three things that I want to share with you uh, that I would like to encourage you with that we could learn from Daniel about holding on to the faith in the middle of terrible troubles. If you have your Bible, let's read along together. Daniel chapter 1, starting with verse 8. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. And he gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who assigned your food and your drink. For why should he see that you are in worse condition than the youths who are of your, are of your own age? Uh, so you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Test your servants for ten days, and let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then uh, let our appearance and the appearance of the youths who eat the king's food be observed by you and deal with your servants according to what you see. So he listened to them in this matter and tested them for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, it was seen that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. So the steward took away their food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. Uh, so here, these uh, verses, again, give us Daniel's response to the problem that he faced in this hostile and pagan environment. How was he going to hold on to his faith? What did he do in response? And we read uh, Daniel's response. And this morning, I, I want to share with you, if you would dare to be like Daniel, uh, then there are things that you can do that you can have faith in terrible uh, trouble. The first thing that Daniel did is that he had the right purpose in mind. We should have the right purpose in mind when we're faced with a problematic situation, uh, when we are in the middle of something terrible going on. Daniel, uh, it says in verse 8, it, there is a strong change uh, that this, it, these things were happening, but then it says, but Daniel resolved. 
Uh, ESV says resolved. King James uses the word purposed. Daniel purposed in his heart uh, that he was not going to defile himself. Uh, So we'd ask the question, what does this mean that Daniel resolved or he purposed in his heart not to defile himself? Uh, First of all, purpose is commitment. It is a commitment that Daniel was making. And let's uh, just stop for a second and ask, what exactly was he committed to? Uh, Was Daniel committed to a vegetarian lifestyle? And are we required to live a vegetarian lifestyle? Is that what the Bible is teaching here? Now, I see you're getting ready to get up and leave. Don't yet. Just hang on. Stay with me. Uh, Because I don't think that's what the Bible is teaching here. That is not the point of what is is being said. Uh, Just remember that the word meat is is mostly made up of the letters E-A-T. So, meat... Most of it means eat, so praise the Lord, right? Uh, just kidding. Uh, Daniel's purpose, uh, he, uh, he was not rebelling against a new set of rules and a new king. Uh, he wasn't just mad about his situation and said, I'm just not cooperating with anything that's going on. Uh, Daniel had a purpose in mind. He had something that he was being committed to. And when, Dan, and it said, when it says Daniel resolved or he purposed in his heart, uh, it wasn't just rebellion, but he was making a commitment to the things of the Lord. He was making a commitment uh, to avoid polluting his life uh, because he has pur- purposed in his heart, or uh, the New American Standard Bible says that he made up his mind Uh, that he was not going to defile himself. He was going to please God. He resolved, he purposed, he made up his mind that he was wanting to please God with everything that he did. The way that Daniel knew what, uh, what would please the Lord and the way that we know today uh, what it is that pleased the Lord is, is found in the Word of God. So Daniel, he no doubt was, was taught some of the things from the Word of God. And these things were important to him. And he came into Babylon, this pagan environment, this hostile environment, uh, with knowledge about the Word of God. And so he wanted to do what was right. He wanted to do what was pleasing, and he knew that what was pleasing from the Word of God. And it is the the same for us today. We find out what pleases the Lord by living according to the Scripture, what is written down. Uh, In the first five books of the Bible, uh, we have recorded what has been... uh, uh, Well, first, it's a lot of history uh, but there's also a lot, of, a lot of instructions about what it is to live a life uh, following the Lord. Uh, and it's called the law. The first five books of the Bible is referred to uh, as the law. Uh, it's important for us to understand today uh, that in those instructions, in that law that God had given to Moses and that every Uh, Hebrew child uh, would be taught from, there were instructions in there about the kinds of food to eat and what not to eat. And there were some things that could have been going on with Daniel uh, that were a problem. Uh, we, we read that Daniel did have a problem with it. He, he, he didn't want to defile himself, but one thing the Bible doesn't say, one of the things the Scripture doesn't say, is what exactly was problematic about it. Uh, so there has been a lot of uh, suggestions made that, that might very well be what it is uh, going on. Uh, some, of the, some of the concerns that might have uh, come up, the problems that Daniel might have faced uh, from the law, there, there are several possible reasons that this food uh, would have been problematic. Uh, first of all, the food that they were presented with might have been unclean. Uh, in these instructions, in the first five books of the Bible, there were, there, were, uh, there were instructions about what to eat, what not to eat. And so that means that some foods, like pork chops and catfish, uh, were not allowed on the menu. Uh, that, uh, that Hebrew children would not be eating those things as a part of a clean diet before the Lord. 
Uh, go and read Leviticus chapter 11. Uh, it details what, uh, what is clean and what is unclean and how, how they would understand that. But there's another thing that might be at issue. There's another thing that might be going on uh, that is problematic for Daniel. In the law, God had forbidden eating bloody meat. Uh, so even if the, the meat was from a clean animal that would have been approved to eat, if it was not prepared in a right way where the blood was drained from the animal and it was still bloody, that, that would have been unacceptable. You can read about that, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 23. There's one third thing that a lot of people think might have been going on with Daniel uh, there in the king's court, and it's this. The food that they were presented with might have been sacrificed to idols as a part of their pagan worship, and Daniel did not want to pollute his life with pagan practices. And so because of those things, it says Daniel purposed, he resolved, he made up his mind, he committed himself uh, not to defile himself, but to live in a way that pleases the Lord. Uh, this uh, commitment that he had made, this purpose uh, that he had in mind uh, was, was a commitment, but this, com this purpose took courage. Purpose inspired courage in his life uh, that, uh, that Daniel, because he held so tightly to this purpose, uh, it led him to be courageous in his actions. So what did he do? He, he, de he decided uh, that he wasn't going to defile himself. He was going to uh, remain holy before the Lord. He wanted to, uh, to do this, and so he took courageous action. Uh, and uh, we uh, read verse 8, and uh, it's, it seems uh, when we read verse 8 that it just says that Daniel was the one who had this purpose. Daniel was the one who made a commitment, who made up his mind that he was going to do this. Uh, it has led a lot of Bible commentators to, to believe that Daniel was standing alone. That Daniel, in all of the king's court, of all of the young people that were there, might have been the only one who said, I'm not going to do this. I don't want to do this. And so there he was in, in a place where uh, there, there, he might have been the only one of all these young people that decided he was not going to compromise himself. He, he might have stood alone. Uh, Daniel, because he had courage, I believe he inspired others to have courage also. We do read in, in the verses we've read today uh, that his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, uh, they join him in his, uh, his test that he proposes. But Daniel alone is said to have this purpose. He was the one who had the courage to stand up against what was wrong. Uh, we, I pray today that God would uh, give us Daniels, that he would raise up people who would hold on tightly to his purpose. I pray that God would give us Daniel, uh, Daniels who will courageously stand on the Lord's business. Uh, that Daniel, he wanted to, to do this and he uh, stood out from the crowd and he maybe stood alone to do it. Uh, but Daniel did not just hold tightly to purpose. Uh, the Bible says that Daniel related rightly to people. And we should dare to be like Daniel. Not only did Daniel have the right purpose in mind, but he wanted to uh, relate well with people. And the second point that I would make with us this morning is that when we are faced with problems in, in, a, in a system surrounded by people who are pushing us to do uh, pagan or ungodly things, uh, that, that we need to respond in a way uh, based on our convictions, but also that doesn't alienate us from the people that we are around. And Daniel did this. He, he tried to establish rapport with people. And we would do well to learn this lesson from him, to establish rapport with the people that are around us. And how, how does Daniel go about doing this? Uh, does he uh, pitch a temper tantrum and say, I'm not doing this, and he 
slams his tray down on the ground? Does he uh, just object loudly and, and not in, in this way? Uh, and I don't think Daniel does that. Daniel tries to establish rapport uh, through showing respect. Uh, he goes to the person who was put in charge of taking care of him, the chief eunuch, uh, and he proposes uh, a, a, a suggestion. Uh, Daniel recognized the position that the chief of eunuchs was in. And respectfully, uh, he worked within the structure that he was placed in, the government st structure that God had given. Uh, later in the book of Daniel, we'll see that Daniel actually becomes a part of this government structure. Uh, he is put in a position of service to the king. Uh, and uh, in his interaction with the king, you look, you pay attention of how much respect he shows for this evil and ungodly king. Uh, Daniel, he went to the chief of eunuchs to ask for permission. Uh, so New American Standard NIV says that when Daniel went to this chief of eunuchs that he was asking for permission. He did not go in making demands of what, what they were going to do and not going to do. He was looking for a way to, to build rapport with this person. So he goes to ask permission for an alternative diet. And apparently this was a pretty big request. Uh, Daniel, when he did this, it was not like Daniel was uh, sitting down at Applebee's and the waiter comes up and says, here's the menu. And Daniel says, you know what, uh, can I substitute all this gross and ungodly stuff that everybody else is eating and can you just bring me a Hebrew Happy Meal? Uh, I just imagine in that situation the, the chief eunuch responding in the, with these words, this is not Burger King and you cannot have it your way. That would have been my imagination for how he would respond. And I, I can hear him saying that, but he doesn't actually say that. Uh, he doesn't respond with, no way you can do that. You're going to eat what everybody else eats, and if you don't like it, too bad. Uh, what uh, The request that Daniel made uh, was a big request. It was a serious request, and the, the chief of eunuchs uh, could very well have been like, absolutely not. You're, we're not doing that here. You're going to eat what everybody else eats. Uh, and we see in the passage that this request that Daniel made, it comes with peril. There is danger uh, in this request that Daniel made. And so not only was Daniel putting himself in place uh, to be punished or, or killed by the king because he did not want to go along with the king's plan, uh, did you pay attention to what the eunuch said? He said this. He said, I fear my Lord, the king, and that you would endanger my head. That the eunuch said to Daniel, you know, the choice you're making and what you're asking is not only on you, it's on me. He said, I am legitimately in fear that my life could be forfeited if we don't follow the plan of the king. And so Daniel, he needed to re realize this request came with peril, uh, that it was, uh, there was danger involved in it. Uh, and this uh, caretaker, this uh, chief eunuch, this uh, person who was primarily responsible for Daniel and all the other young people uh, in the court, uh, he realized that the king was going to hold him responsible for the health and the well-being of every one of these young people uh, that were in his care. Uh, why? Why didn't the, the chief eunuch respond, you can't have it your way? Uh, why did he respond uh, the, the way that he did to Daniel? Uh, and uh, and it, says, uh, it says in verse 9 that God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of eunuchs. Uh, we uh, should do what Daniel did. We should seek favor from the hand of the Lord. Uh, what this uh, verse means, verse 9, it says God gave favor, meant, the, uh, meant that he gave kindness. He gave mercy, or Daniel had kindness and mercy in the sight of the chief of eunuchs. Uh, that the, the chief of eunuchs was treating him uh, with kindness. And uh, I would just say that there are times in our lives when we see the truth of Proverbs 16, 7 play out in life. 
Uh, and that verse says this, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. And here is a situation where Daniel was trying to do things to please the Lord. He was trying to live a life of holiness uh, in, in front of God and in front of other people. And, and we find that God does this, that, that because his ways pleased the Lord, he, he made it so that even his enemy, captive, uh, um, his, his ca- evil captor, uh, is working with him in a peaceful way. Now I do need to say, we do need to know, this is not an all the time thing. There are times when there will not be peace with our enemies. And we will see later in our, and we'll see that later in our study. Uh, sometimes God gives peace uh, in, with our enemies. And we read uh, last week and the, the week before, sometimes God gives you into the hand of an evil king. Uh, sometimes your enemies are allowed to, to win the battle of the day. Another sermon that we might preach another day uh, would be good for us to think about is this idea uh, that sometimes the devil brings war. God can bring peace to your relationships, even with your enemies, uh, but the devil, he's trying to bring war even with your friends and family. It'd be a good sermon for another day, but we're not going there today. Uh, But there is a word of caution that we need to to take here. Uh, If we are going to seek favor... Uh, we need to be very careful about how we do that. Sometimes we get put in a situation, like Daniel, where the pressure is on us to make a choice. And everybody around us might be saying, this is the choice that you need to make. This is what you need to do. And sometimes those choices are not going to be choices that honor God. And you're put in a situation where you are left with the question, Do I want to please God by living a life of holiness, not defile myself or pollute myself with the wicked ways of the world, the pagan practices that are out there, or am I going to try and please people? Am I going to try and win favor with somebody else that's in a position of authority over me or someone who has an expectation that I'm going to react in a certain way? And the caution here is this, if we ever get to the point where we would rather please men than God, we have a problem. We have a problem. Daniel resolved, he committed, he, he made up his mind, he was going to do what's right. Uh, the, the favor with other people only came in under this desire. That if your number one desire, if your big goal is please God, there are ways that we can try and win favor with people that are around us. We can be wise in our interaction and we can be gentle in our interaction and we can uh, provide suggestions that that are going to be heard and helpful. Uh, But we, we must keep the order that way. We've got to please God first and then we, we may be able to work out a situation where we have favor uh, with other people, but we should seek the Lord. We should try, do not abandon the purpose of pleasing God so that you can please men. Uh, the next thing that Daniel did, a third way that he tried to build rapport uh, with the chief of eunuchs is that he suggested alternatives. Uh, he uh, looked at the situation and he realized the king's desire uh, was that, that these young people be healthy, uh, that they eat a diet that is going to lead them to be in their best physical shape as far as uh, the Babylonians were concerned. These were the types of food, these were the health foods that they needed to eat. Uh, but Daniel, when he came to suggest alternatives, uh, he came in humility. He came in gentleness. He came with respect. He came with wisdom. And Daniel suggests an alternative that allows himself and his friends uh, to be healthy and holy, all the while not alienating himself from the person who was put in authority over him. 
Uh, this, is, uh, this is important that we, we really need people today. We need people today who are going to try in humility and wisdom and gentleness to interact with the world that is around us in a way that we can suggest some alternatives to the wicked ways and the pagan practices of the world uh, that, will, that will not alienate us from the people that are around us. Uh, Daniel offers a, a suggestion, an alternative uh, that ends up being acceptable. Uh, that the, the, the chief of the eunuchs uh, accepts, uh, and uh, it's an alternative uh, that, uh, uh, that he goes along with. And in this, uh, this passage of Scripture, there's something I want to point out. Uh, in the book of Daniel, here is the first example, and we will see others through our study. This is the first example in the book of Daniel. We are going to see that the ways and the wisdom of God are always superior to the ways and the wisdom of men. Uh, the king had an idea in his mind of what these kids needed to eat in order to be the, uh, the healthiest that they could be. Daniel suggests a, a, an alternative diet. Let us, let us eat vegetables and let us drink water. And after 10 days, you, you be the judge. You decide and, and let, us, uh, uh, let us do whatever based on your decision. And when it came down to this 10-day test to show what was the best, uh, they, the, eunuch, the chief of the eunuchs, what did he find? He found that Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah uh, were in better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the other people around them, all the other kids. Uh, am I the only one that finds some comfort thinking, man, it, it's good to look fat? Uh, maybe it's just me. Uh, but uh, they, the scripture says that they were, they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh. And oh, how we need the wisdom from God today about how we could suggest ways uh, that we could work within the government and, and in the relationships that we have to provide alternatives to the ungodly practices around us. We, we don't automatically need to uh, run to war. We, we can maybe work within the, the structure that is in place, the authority that's in place in our lives. Uh, we see here Daniel holds tightly to his purpose. He is committed to the Lord, and he is trying to relate rightly to people. Let us be that kind of person. Let us be a person who is going to hold tightly to our purpose of pleasing the Lord no matter what goes on and help us to relate rightly to people. As we go through the book of Daniel, there's going to be more to come uh, from, from Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. There are going to be more situations that come up uh, where their commitment and their, their purpose to honor and please the Lord are going to be problems in the land. Uh, what ends up being uh, something that is, is good and their commitment to the Lord becomes a conflict in the land. And I want to encourage you, pay attention to how they interact with the people that are around them. Uh, and so as we go through, pay, keep your eyes open to that. The last thing I would talk about this morning is this, is that after we have uh, tried to have the right purpose, the right commitment in mind, and after we have tried to relate rightly to people by building rapport with them, uh, the, the last thing that we need to do is that we need to uh, leave the results to the Lord. When Daniel went to the chief of eunuchs and he said, you know, we don't want to defile him, ourselves. I don't want to defile myself. Uh, let's uh, propose this test. Um, I do not know. I don't think the scripture says that Daniel had a guarantee from the Lord that everything was going to work out in this test. I don't think that God told Daniel, he said, if you do this, I will make sure that you're uh, better in appearance and fatter than fle in the flesh than all the other people. I, I don't know that Daniel had that guarantee. So if, if that is the truth, that he didn't have a guarantee, uh, and the scripture does not say that he had gotten a, a revelation from the Lord, that in trying to carry out this test, there was a point in Daniel's life where he had to hand it over to the Lord and just wait and see. 
We don't know what the Lord is going to do. But we have to wait. We have to see what His plans are. Man, it would be so nice to have a guarantee of what things are going to happen in our life. To know that the struggle we're in right now is going to be over in just a few days. To know that the problems we face right now aren't going to be a big problem next week or next month. But we do not have guarantees about the future. We have to leave the results to the Lord. We have to trust that the Lord is at work in the situations that we face. And Daniel, when he proposed this test, again, he was waiting to see what the Lord that would do. And we would, we would take away from that. We would say that there will be risks that we need to take in the faith. We do not have guarantees that if we try and live a life that's pleasing to the Lord, uh, that doesn't automatically mean that we're going to get all the results that Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah got. Uh, You cannot look at this as a formula and say, if I'm living in this way, then God has got to guarantee me a future where everything is going to go right. You may not experience the same victories that Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah experienced, but that does not mean that... that, that, Um, that you're not living a life that's pleasing to the Lord. There are going to be risks that we take. Uh, No no guarantees of victory. Uh, We do this with a risk. There's a risk that we take, but we also do it with a belief that there will be rewards. There will be rewards for living a life of faith. As we go through the book, we read about Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, uh, that they find a lot of success in Babylon. They were in this hostile pagan environment, and they worked. Uh, they in, got into the king's court. They got into service with the king, and uh, they get promotions. Uh, they get bonuses. They get special recognition over and above all of their fellow employees. And, and we, we want to say, well, if I, if I work hard and if I'm a good employee and if I try and please the Lord, then that's going to be that way for me. I'm going to be rewarded in this life uh, with, with uh, promotions and bonuses and, and special recognition. And we all want those things. But for Christians, we have to realize that sometimes very faithful people of God God will be blessed in this way. They will be promoted. They will be praised. They will get bonuses. They will experience a lot of things in life that that just seem like they're winning in every single way. But you know what? There's a whole lot of people who live a faithful life to the Lord, that live their life in a way that pleases the Lord. And you know what they experience? They experience hardships. They experience trials. They experience difficult things to face. And in our world that preaches, if you're faithful enough, and if you're good enough, and if you follow the Lord in the right way, you're going to be blessed, and you're going to have health and wealth and prosperity in everything that you do. But that is not the message of the Bible. That is not what we find, that we, will, we have no promise, we have no guarantee of a, a reward, a blessing here in this life. But what do we have as the people of God? We do have a promise about the future. And we'll see that in Daniel, that there is something worth trusting God with. Even when it seems like everything around us is falling apart, when it really does look like the absolute worst is happening, we can know that there's a future that is different than the current experience that we are in. We can know that sometimes the rewards that we will have as Christians will not be in the form of prosperity, health, and wealth uh, in this life, but the pros- we will be rewarded in the life to come. There will be rewards for a life of faith, but sometimes it's not until we leave this life and go on to the life after this one. And, but we, we believe, we, we're leaving that result, we're leaving that in the hands of the Lord. We don't know how it's going to go in our life. We don't know what the rest of our lives are going to look like. Are, are we going to you know, live uh, the, the fairy tale ending uh, and they lived happily ever after? Or are we going to live a life of trials and troubles? We've we got to leave it in the Lord's hands. There are a few application points I'd like to make as we uh, get ready to conclude this morning. Uh, That living a life uh, like Daniel, how do we we dare to be a Daniel today? 
my encouragement for you is this. Be resolute in your commitments. Be resolute. Be resolved. Be committed. Make up your mind uh, to please the Lord in whatever you do. Your highest goal in life as a Christian should be to honor the Lord above all else. To please the Lord above all else. Uh, I find it very interesting in, in the New Testament, in the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, the, the Apostle Paul, he's talking about uh, food offered to idols. Uh, he's talking about, is it, is it good, is it right to eat food that has been offered to idols? And, and one of the things that he says uh, in the context of this chapter is this verse. Whether you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. And we, we would say that, that that would carry over into other areas of life. Whatever you do, make sure that you are doing it for God's glory, that you do it to the glory of God. Be resolute in your commitment that whatever you do, wherever you are, whoever is around, whatever the circumstances, you are going to do all you can do for the glory of God. Daniel had the specific concern of being defiled. And this was in relation to food that was unclean or clean. And uh, while we are free from the dietary restrictions of the Old Testament law, we are not free from the moral restrictions of the law. The moral restrictions of the law are still in place, and it is God's standard for holiness. And so if you are going to make a commitment to do the things that please the Lord, you are going to find that in the pages of this book. You're not going to be able to pray and say, well, I prayed about it and I feel like it's okay if I go and do this. When there's a clear command in Scripture that says no. It's through the pages of this book that we know what is pleasing and honoring to the Lord. True for Daniel, true for us today. Be resolute. Be respectful. You know, we live in, a, in an increasingly evil world. We, we live in a, in a political time, this being an election year, uh, where there's a whole lot of rhetoric. There's a whole lot of uh, hate mongering and there's a lot of fear mongering that are going on uh, related to this election season that we are entering in. And I think there's a lesson to be learned from Daniel that we need to be respectful with the people that are around us. Uh, we're not going to win arguments because we yell louder <laughs> and longer than the people around us. What is going to win the argument? What is, well, how are we going to win people? It is going to be through the wisdom of God, spoken uh, with love in mind. And I want to encourage you to be respectful. And then the last thing I want to encourage you is this, be ready. Be ready. We don't know. We don't know what God's going to do. We don't know how it's going to go, but we do trust Him. We know that He is a good God and that He does good things. And so we need to be in a situation where we, as we are living our life in a way that tries to please Him and honor Him, and we're trying to be respectful to the people around us, we need to be ready for what God is going to do. Live your life to please the Lord and trust Him in the details of how that is going to play out, and you watch Him as He works. You see what He does with the, the situations that you're in. Be ready for what God is doing in your life. I want to challenge you to dare you to be a Daniel. Let's pray. God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to You this morning, and Lord, we uh, read Your Word and we study Your Word, and Lord, there is so much here that helps us, that guides us, that uh, Lord, we can learn from history and we can learn from your commandments and we can learn from uh, all of these things about what, what uh, a life that pleases you looks like. God, I pray that you would give us the boldness of belief that Daniel had. Lord, when we think about being like Daniel, Lord, I know it's tempting to want the, the victories that he wins, to get the promotions that he has, to have the special recognition that he has. And Lord, I pray that we would be more like Daniel in our belief and our commitment, Lord, than, than in, in the circumstances of our lives. Lord, this is what really matters, Lord, to be committed to your purpose. And so we ask uh, that we would be people who would do that. And we pray these things today in Jesus' name. Amen.